In the previous part of this video series, you've learned how to read and understand a wiring diagram of an industrial control panel. And in this video, we're going to continue with the PLC part of that same control panel. So, you may want to watch that video first and come back and continue with this part. In this video, you'll learn about the PLC and its modules wiring diagram. You also see how a VFD is related to a PLC in a wiring diagram. So, before we continue, Please subscribe and click the notification bell and stay tuned for the rest of this video. As I've mentioned in the previous video, this is an actual wiring diagram of a standard control panel with more than 140 pages and we'll check only some of the pages as the others are somehow similar. Do you remember the first rule of thumb from the previous video? This was the reading directions. You should read this wiring diagram from left to right and from top down, just like reading a book. The second important note was these column numbers and their combination with the page number to understand the addressing system of the wiring diagram. This page is the wiring diagram of our S7300 series PLC and the operator touch panel. So, let's start from here. We know that these pages are related to each other. As you see, our 24 volt power is coming from page 11, column 9, and page 12, column 1. Our earth is also has been branched from page 17, column 9. If we trace these addresses, we've reached to page 2, where we had our 24 volt power supply that we had checked it in the previous video. The 24 volts, 0 volt, and the earth ink are respectively connected to L, plus, M, and PE terminals on the PLC CPU. Same as always, if we are designing a wiring diagram and we are not sure about the connections of our device, we have to take a look at its datasheet or manual. For example, here we should see the PLC datasheet to figure out where we should exactly connect the wires. On the other hand, the operator panel has been powered up from the X4.0 terminal blocks using a cable with the WC4.0 tag. This is the standard way to illustrate a cable and its core numbers in a wiring diagram. The other things we observe on this page are PLC cards that are in the same rack as the CPU. This arrow means that the rack will be continued on the next page. You also see communication cabling here. The operator panel is communicating to the PLC directly via the MPI port of the CPU using a Profibus cable. The WCDP5 cable is also a Profibus cable, as it's connected to the DP port of the CPU. And this is the color of the cable, which is red with green strips. To know where this cable is connected, we should refer to page 34 and column number 0. And here is our cable from page 30. If we look carefully at this page, we understand that this is a remote I.O from a brand named Vago. This is a head module or interface module with a Profibus DP connection that is connected directly to CPU. And these are the signal or I.O modules. Let's get back to page 30 to continue with our first PLC card. If you've been familiar with the Siemens PLC cards and modules, or you simply Google this order number, you'll understand that this is an analog output card with four channels. And each channel is dedicated to a single device. The page number where we can find the wiring diagram for this card is here in the middle, page 4D. This is our analog output card with four channels. In the first look, we see some connections here from 0 to 20. Each card has some screw connections that we should connect the wires to them. You may know them as front connectors. These numbers are the screw numbers on the front connector of the card. Same as our PLC, we have to connect the 24 volt power to turn on our PLC card. If you compare it with the card's wiring diagram within its manual, then you see that the connection number 1 and 20 are for connecting the 24 volt DC power. This is what you see in the main wiring diagram as well. We've configured the card for the voltage output. 
then, according to the manual, the first two channels of this card are for closer connections with no compensation for the wire resistance. In this case, you should connect these two connections to each other at the PLC card. Channels 3 and 4 should be used for 4 wire connections. The wiring diagram for the card will be different if we decide to use the current output format. The PLC programmer can adjust the settings in the software to specify whether it would be a voltage or current type of output. In the main wiring diagram, the first two channels were left empty, and channels 3 and 4 have been occupied. Normally, there should be some descriptions for each channel of the card for us to know to which device this channel is going to be connected, or already has been connected. For example, channel 3 is assigned to the Film Traverse motor speed reference. The Film Traverse is the name of the mechanism that the electric motor is driving that. But from the motor speed reference, we understand that this output voltage is telling the motor to adjust its speed at each moment, according to the voltage it's receiving. Of course, it's not possible without the VFT in between the motor and the PLC card. If I turn to page 8, column 9, we see that our speed reference output is connected to the terminals of an SEW VFT. On this page, we generally see that the AC three phase power is connected to the inputs of the VFT. And the VFT is adjusting the power flowing toward the electric motor according to the speed reference it's receiving from the PLC analog output card. For instance, consider that the speed reference voltage is between 0 to 10 volts, and the motor nominal speed is 1500 RPM. When the PLC card sends out a 5 volt signal to the VFD, the VFD will adjust the power to the motor so that it will rotate with 50% of its nominal speed, which is 750 RPM. The rest of this page is related to some interlocks or conditions. Now, let's see what we have for a digital or discrete input card of the PLC. Clearly, the designer has shown the wiring diagram of this card on four different pages, which is a good idea to prevent congestion. I turn to page 43 to check the first byte of this digital input module. As you might guess, some push buttons, switches, and contacts are connected to our DI card as we have explained more about them in the previous video. This time, as this is an input card, the designer has put the module on the bottom of the page to adhere to the top-down reading direction. Same as before, the 24-volt power is connected to the corresponding terminals of the card. The first signal from the left comes off a push button tagged as SP431. The X4 terminal block and the core number 4 of the WC4.0 cable, which is a multi-core cable, are in between the push button and the card. Obviously, when we push this push button, the 24 volt signal will be transferred to the first channel of the first byte of this digital input card and will signal the PLC to turn on the device. This circle here shows that this is an illuminated push button and this is the sign for an indicator lamp. When this push button is pushed and the device turns on, Therefore, the PLC should send out a command from one of its digital output cards to turn on this indicator lamp. We can find the wiring of this indicator lamp on page 60, column 1. And there it is. This channel of the digital output card will send a 24-volt signal toward this lamp, and therefore, it will turn on. In the end, consider that, after designing a wiring diagram, we use it in different stages of the project in panel fabrication stage, in pre-commissioning and commissioning stages, and after all, during production and for maintaining and troubleshooting. That's it for this video. If you like similar videos, please give this one a thumbs up and tell us about your questions in the comments and we'll consider them for the next videos. Thanks for watching and I suggest watching these videos next.